Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. The auditing and accounting problems at the SNP have not only got way worse, they've taken a couple of weird turns. Firstly, it appears that the auditors haven't just quit. They actually quit about six months ago. And in all that time, the SNP have been unable to find another set of accountants or anyone to come in and do their books. And it's not surprising because if they're so bad that the first lot walked away, no one else will want to touch them with a barge pole. You start doing the books like that only, you know, when it's obviously something criminal. Uh, and any auditor, any accountant could lose his accreditation with, you know, the professional bodies and that's them out of a job. They aren't going to touch it. So that goes to show how bad the accounts must be. Number one. Number two, of course, the second problem they have is that they have a deadline looming. They have to get audited accounts to the Electoral Commission before the 7th of July. They're starting to run out of time and without an accountant, it isn't going to happen. It could even be that the Electoral Commission says that they no longer can be recognised as a political party and force them to disband. It's just popcorn time, isn't it? So we're going to take a look at this. Um, it's two articles. Uh, I'm going to just gonna, like, glaze over one and just have a little bit more depth on the other one. But it is uh, an amazingly bad state of affairs that a political party could be forced to disband simply because it is so corrupt, so secretive and so riven with criminality, really, that it cannot possibly be allowed to continue. It would be the final total humiliation of Sturgeon's legacy. And I, for one, can't wait. Here goes. So we're doing the, uh, the, the, the six monthly thing first. The SNP hid the resignation of auditors for six months, Hamza Yousaf reveals, uh, and he's gonna claim that he knew nothing, uh, which kind of means that he's not as important as he thought he was. He wasn't as closely involved. Maybe they didn't think he was worthy of the knowledge. Um, which will upset him because he's got, you know, very, um, he's very thin skinned and he likes to think that he was, you know, deeply at the core of the party. Uh, the man's an idiot. But anyway, uh, the SNP hid the resignation of their auditors during a police investigation for six months, Hamza Yousaf disclosed today. And, and it's not just that he, they, they, they hid it from the public or they hid it from party members. They hid it from virtually everyone. And we're talking even the National Executive Council. This is so bad. This is so bad. This this screams of fraud. And after the auditors have quit, of course, you've got Sturgeon telling the NEC, don't worry, the accounts are fine. The accounts are fine. Don't look. Don't ask questions. And she knew the auditors have quit. Unbelievable. But anyway, the First Minister said even he didn't know Johnson Carmichael quit last year until he was briefed after winning the SNP leadership uh, on March the 27th. Uh, oh boy, has he won. He won uh, an absolute poison chalice, hasn't he? Um, it is understood that the SNP's ruling body, the National Executive Committee, was also kept in the dark. Heads will roll. Um, I tell you that this will be the final breakup because it will cause so many problems for the SNP. Nobody within the party will trust anyone else in the party there'll be those that knew that are still there and the s and the nec won't be able to trust them why weren't they told this is the most important body within the party and they had one of the most fundamentally important facts hidden from them this alone this fact alone could destroy the snp i i tell you what i reckon there's a national popcorn shortage in scotland today uh, the development was only made public on April the 7th, and I could, could cover it at the time, but it was kind of released as though they've only just literally walked away. Nobody knew at that point that they'd been gone since October. Uh, Mr Yousaf said the firm resigned around October, but it is understood it actually gave notice in September. Uh, for most of the half year involved, SNP HQ was under the direction of then Chief Executive Peter Murrell, the husband of Nicola Sturgeon. Murrell was arrested and released without charge after being questioned by police last Wednesday as part of a probe into the SNP finances, as we know. Speaking to the media in Leith today, Mr Yousaf agreed that it was extraordinary that the party had failed to appoint a new set of financial overseers since the resignation. 
Now, it doesn't surprise me. While there's no auditors, while there's no accountants, Murrell would have a free hand. He would have total control over the accounts. He would be able to manipulate them. Um, he would be able to shift cash around, move you know, assets about, that sort of thing, with no oversight. So that's why he has kept this quiet. He and Sturgeon undoubtedly knew this is tantamount, I think, to... Uh, it's definitely fraudulent. It's got to be definitely a crime, I suspect. Um, I think it's going to get far, far worse for the pair of them. Uh, I think that they are both going to be in very serious trouble. And I think other very senior people in the SNP are going to be in immense amounts of trouble. And we're talking lengthy jail time trouble. I mean, is that serious and that amount of money? Um, anyway, he admitted it would now be challenging for the SNP to file its 2022 accounts by the July deadline and the party would work furiously to hit it. I don't think the word challenging is the word they're looking for. I think the word they're looking for is impossible. Um, if the accounts are as bad uh, as they must be, that no other accountant wants to touch it, then it will take far, far longer to do these accounts than uh, than any sort of normal pack, you know, pack of accounts would take, number one. And that's number two, assuming you can even get another firm of accountants to come in and even work on them. Um, he said they resigned last year. I think it was in and about October. He said, but the fact that we don't have auditors in place is one of the major priorities. You can imagine when I found that out, being the party leader, the party is quickly looking to secure another auditor. Asked if the SNP would be able to meet the July 7 deadline for submitting its 2022 annual accounts to the Electoral Commission, he said, we're working very hard to do that. It is one of the significant priorities. Um, I always thought uh, the gender bill was your number one priority, followed by, uh, you know, bottle deposit scheme, then independence, but apparently no. No, keeping, keeping out of prison is your number one priority, isn't it? Uh, he said, when I learn about the fact that we don't have an auditor in place, of course, I've instructed the party to get on with finding another auditor. So we're working very hard to do that. Um, but it's been a while now. Uh, it, you know, it's been a week uh, and you haven't been able to get an auditor in a week. And that's assuming that's just when you started looking. And it hasn't been like months of looking. Um, you know, people will come in and they'll, they'll make charge you double time or triple time. But somebody would be bound to do it if they thought they could make a fortune out of you unless they know that if they did do it they'd lose their you know ability to ever work again because they uh, they'd, they'd be working on illegal accounts that, that's clearly got to be a question that's got to be asked uh he says put to him that it was extraordinary that the auditors resigned in october yet he and possibly other senior mps uh, senior smp figures weren't told he says i don't disagree with the premise of your question that's clearly why I've asked the NEC to do a review of governance and transparency. Review, yes. Change, not so much. Uh, asked why auditors had resigned, Mr Youssef said, I don't think we can release that information. Oh, you can release that information. There is nothing stopping you releasing that information. What you mean is you will not release that information because you know how damaging it would be. They resigned because they felt it was inappropriate and wrong for them to complete those accounts. They knew those accounts were such a work of fiction that people would be going to jail. That's all it is. Uh, but my job, he said, as leader of the SNP, is to make sure we get auditors in place as soon as we possibly can. Well, that would have been the following day. Accountants will take you on like that because money. Uh, and the fact that they're not tells you an awful lot. Um, asked if the continued absence of auditors indicated party dysfunction, Mr Youssef said it's certainly problematic. I won't deny that at all. Is that truth from the man? That's a very unusual thing, isn't it? Um, that is why one of the first things I did as leader on hearing this information was to instruct the party to get on with finding another auditor, and that's what we're doing. Asked when he first found out about the auditors resigning, Mr Youssef said, I first knew shortly after becoming the leader of the SNP brought up to speed in terms of the financial picture and the financial health of the party. But of course, before then, I had no role in the party finances, he says, walking away from that problem as fast as he can. He 
was a senior minister and a senior member of the party and to claim that he knew nothing of party finances is a joke there's no way he didn't know um, asked why he hadn't made it public immediately he said you can imagine that being the leader of the SNP being the first minister of Scotland there's a number of priorities that I've got to deal with first and foremost dealing with the cost of living crisis crisis and trying to deal with the health inequalities dealing with investing in our public sector yeah I think dealing with the cost of living crisis in your terms means making it worse by increasing taxes and uh, removing transport links uh, and you know removing services so that people will find they'll have to pay out more for other things and making sure that jobs disappear that sort of thing all the things all the policies that your party puts forward uh he said and that's why the very first nec meeting that i chaired as leader of the party literally less than a week as the leader of the SNP, was to get the nec to agree a review into governance and transparency with external input scottish labor deputy leader jackie bailey said the plot continues to thicken that the SNP did not come clean about this for months stinks to high heavens and again with Jackie Bailey has nailed it it does it absolutely stinks something should have been said from day one the fact that this was held so secret so covered that they didn't even tell their own executive body I'm sure the Electoral Commission is going to investigate this party I think the police may well be involved in the full investigation, not just of the accounts of this party, but even in the governance, because I'm pretty sure that there are several laws being broken here. I, I can't say for sure. I'm not. A, I'm not a particular. You know, I'm not a jurist. I'm not a, a, anyone that's an expert in sort of electoral law, but I'm pretty sure that there's got to be rules in place. Uh, about notification of things like this it, it, if there isn't it's deeply worrying it's you know well the very next line she said it was deeply worrying if they've been unable to replace the auditors in all this time uh, and it's time for the secrecy to end but the SNP are the most secretive organization they're like the masons you know you were aware that they're there but nobody knows who's in them uh, because there some people are actually ashamed of it uh, but it is it's just a cabal of criminality of corruption, of fraudulence, of theft, of destruction, of family life, of economies, of everything that's good and decent. And this pe these people are just the worst. Uh, anyway, Scottish Tory chairman Craig Hoy added, the stench surrounding the SNP's finances becomes more toxic by the day. It's an extraordinary revelation that the SNP auditors resigned as far back as October when senior figures have spent months maintaining that there were no questions over the party finances and as i said you've got uh, even audio of uh, nicola sturgeon saying please don't ask questions the counts are fine uh, that was a lie she is now a provable liar but we've known that for some time uh, the fact that they've apparently not found replacements makes this business even murkier without hampering the police investigation it's long past time for the smp to drop their addiction to secrecy and give a full account of what's been going on in the management of their party uh, Christine Jardine of the Lib Dem said, I am deeply concerned that while the First Minister is consumed by the drama inside his own party, no one is getting on with running the country. Um, it is... Uh, it's an appalling, it's an appalling abuse of power. Um, the, it, and the lies, the cover-up, the secrecy, and the fact that there's no accountability. He is walking away. He's the leader of the party. He should be responsible even if, if he's coming in and saying i didn't know then why the hell did you not know before running why did you run i mean put it this way uh, i'm i wouldn't go and work for a company without at least going and checking at company's house to see what their accounts are like are their accounts up to date what's their balance sheet because i don't want to go and work for a company that's close to bankruptcy because i might be getting another job three months down the line First thing you do when you apply for a job for a company and they offer it to you, before you accept, you go in and you look at their accounts and you say, yes, okay, they're steady, they're stable, they're a stable company. I will go work for them. If you see one that's close to bankruptcy, you say, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. You know, it's he wasn't looking at the accounts. He's an idiot. Uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, but And that, that's the one I was going to do in depth. We're just going to flick over to this one. 
Uh, the SNP is warning the Electoral Commission over difficulty in finding new auditors as the deadline looms. And this is like the second half of this video. Uh, and it's the other just thing. I'm just going to flick over it. I'm not going to go into depth because I think there's far more to come. And we'll do the depth, the in-depth one later um, if they fail to find one. And if the audit, uh, and if the, the, the Electoral Commission uh, decide that they're going to do something worse. Because uh, it is only early days. They may get someone in to do it. Um, the SNP is under pressure to find new auditors so its accounts can be filed to the agency in July. If they're not, the party could be fined. The trouble is the party don't have a lot of cash. Uh, and without um, paying their fine, they could actually be wound up as a party. The Electoral Commission has that power. Uh, so the SNP has warned the Electoral Commission of the difficulty it's having in finding new auditors after its previous firm resigned in October last year. The admission to the elections watchdog comes just months before a crunch deadline which requires political parties to submit their accounts to the agency by July the 7th or risk being fined. The SNP is facing questions and accusations of secrecy over the timeline of the resignation of Johnson Carmichael, which was announced last week, and we've gone into it. Uh, I mean, you know, so it's just there, they've, they've, they've quit. Um, apparently the party then began approaching alternative fir firms in late 2022 to no avail, with the search intensif intensifying in early 2023. So they've been looking for a long time, and nobody, nobody wants to do this. Um... And it is, it is very telling that nobody ever wants to touch these party finances. Um, and I think the problem they have is that they are so bad. They, 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 just, they, just don't know, they just don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what they do. But the SNP have got, where are we today? It's the 12th of August. So they've got 12th of May, 12th of June, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 11 weeks. It's about 11 weeks. They've got 11 weeks in which they've got to find new auditors, get them on board, hand them the books. The auditors are going to have to go across these books fully, in depth. They'll probably have to do some research backwards to see where everything came from because you're probably going to have to go back to the 2021 books to find out the starting position for the 2022 books. They've then got to do the full audit, prepare the accounts, send the accounts in, get them signed off, get them agreed by the NEC, get them back, get them finalised and publish them. I tell you, 11 weeks, it's going to be tight. It's absolutely going to be tight to do that, especially if there's going to be as many problems as we think there is. Anyway, uh, I shall round off here, come up and we'll finish the video. I think ever since becoming leader, Hamza Youssef has had a hell of a time of it. I'll be fair. It has been a very difficult time. Uh, anyone in his position would find it difficult. Um, of course, it doesn't help that he is a complete failure in everything he's ever done. This role requires someone who can actually do things, not someone who fails at doing things. And all his political career, he has failed and failed and failed. But he's always failed upwards. Uh, and now he's failed upwards into the highest position he can possibly reach, just as everything is crashing and burning. Um, and it is absolutely entertaining. Now, there's a lot of people who will sit and watch this and I think, oh, well, finally, finally, we're coming to the end of this very difficult, traumatic time for the party. And I would say to them, no, you're not coming anywhere near the end. In fact, I still think we're at the beginning. I still think there is much, much more to come. There is a lot more entertainment in this party. Senior figures will be roasted. Senior figures may go to prison. The party will undoubtedly change. The party will probably splinter. I think it will form into two. I think some will go one way, some will go another. I think there's going to be an absolute schism in the party. It will be possibly the end of sort of the, the SNP as we know it. If the election committee doesn't even wind them up, uh, but then there'll be a new party formed with the two uh, the two f sort of uh, factions. You'll have the hard independence and the soft independence. You, there's just so much mileage to come. And I still, as I say, I still think there's a lot more revelations out there. Uh, and this isn't, this is, to quote Winston Churchill, this isn't the end. This isn't even the beginning of the end. But it is at least the end of the beginning. Good old Winston. 
anyway i shall finish there thank you very much for watching We've got you've come a long way this has been a very long video today um, so if you've come all the way to the end of this video and you haven't yet subscribed you may as well because you've done me so much good in doing it anyway so do subscribe because there's a lot more on this that's gonna come out and i'd like you to watch it with me uh, and we'll go through it together and we will ridicule them we will laugh at them and we will enjoy watching this entire edifice crumble and fall and crash and burn so thank you very much for watching and until next time, stay safe, stay well, please enjoy the show, and goodbye. <laughs>